Assalamualaikum guys. Okay, so in this lecture we are gonna continue with our uh, paper, May June 2010, chemistry, AS Chemistry 9701, and paper one variant one. All right. So let's get started. Okay, we are gonna do the next 20 questions. Sorry, the next 10 questions from 11 to 20 in this lecture. Okay, so let's get started. Alright, so MCQ number 11. Swimming pool water contains, uh, can be kept free of harmful bacteria by adding aqueous sodium chlorate 1. Alright, sodium chlorate 1 is basically the uh, antiseptic that has been added, the disinfectant basically I should rather say, is, that is added to water to uh, clean the swimming pool water, okay. Now this is the reaction that is given over here, okay. Uh, a reversible reaction, the first reaction is reversible and the second reaction is irreversible, okay, it cannot be reversed. Now, so this means that the first one will follow Le Chatelier's principle and the second one will not. By which method would maintain the highest concentration of HOCl? All right, we need to maintain the HOCl concentration. That is, we need to keep this equilibrium to the right hand side, okay. We need to keep this equilibrium to the right hand side. Then, well, this equation has nothing to do with that one. Although, but uh, yeah, the only thing is that the OCL negative concentration can be removed by bright sunshine. That's it. So it will cause the equilibrium to shift to the left hand side. But let's see. All right. Uh, option A says acidify the pool water. Okay. Acidifying means adding H positive ions. If we add H positive ions, it will react with the OH negative ions. It will remove it from the solution and hence the H for OH negative ion concentration will decrease. The equilibrium will shift to the left uh, right hand side and so HOCl concentration will rise okay so A can be a possible answer because this will increase the concentration of HOCl. Now option B add a solution of chloride ions okay what adding chloride ions will have no effect on any of these two because first one has nothing to do with the chloride ions and second is the irreversible reaction so will not follow Le Chatelier's principle so B cannot be the answer. Add so uh, OH negative ions, okay, if we add OH negative ions, OH negative ion concentration will increase the equilibrium in that case will shift on to the left hand side and this will remove HOCl, it will not increase HOCl. So again, this will not increase the HOCl concentration. Bubble air through the air, through water, okay, air means oxygen, if we bubble oxygen through it, again, this is an irreversible reaction, has no effect. So option A is correct. Move, moving on to the next MCQ. Okay. MCQ number 12, thiosulfate reacts with dilute HCl to produce a pale yellow precipitate. Right, 1 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube HCl is added to 10 cm cube of 0.02 moles per dm cube of thiosulfate. Okay, and the reaction occurs slowly. Now, if the experiment is repeated with 1 cm cube of 1 mole per dm cube HCl, alright, so the HCl, uh, 0.1 mole per dm cube HCl, so this condition stays constant, but 10 cm cube. 10 cm cube of 0 0.02 moles. Initially, we had 0 0.02 moles of thiosulfate, but now we have greater 0 0.05 moles of thiosulfate. What would happen? Obviously, if the concentration of one of the reactants increase, then the frequency of effective collisions will increase, and so the rate of reaction will increase. Okay. So now let's look at option A. The activation energy of the reaction is lower. No, that's not the case. Activation energy is only affected when the route changes. Okay, when the pathway changes, and that happens when in presence of catalyst only. So A cannot be the answer. What about B? The reaction proceeds by a different pathway. Again, no, this is not the case because this would have been the case when a catalyst was present. What about option C? The collisions between reactant particles was more violent. No, they are more violent only when the temperature rises, not when the concentration increases. So the only option we are left with is option D. Reactant collides more frequently. Yes, that is the case because more concentration would be more frequent collisions and hence a faster rate of reaction. Okay, MCQ number 13. How does the concentrated sulfuric acid behave when it reacts with sodium chloride? All right, sodium chloride and concentrated sulfuric acid. Guys, isn't this a reaction that we've already done in our organic chemistry, uh, sorry, in organic chemistry? This is a reaction directly from the syllabus. Okay, so sodium chloride concentrated sulfuric acid, it will form sodium hydrogen sulfate and HCl. HCl will not be further dissociated because this is quite strong and it is quite resistant to oxidation. So it acts only as an acid because acid, uh, the property of acid is that it donates protons. So yes, not as an oxidizing agent, not as an oxidizing agent, nor as a reducing agent. So A should be the correct answer. 
Moving on to the next MCQ. Uh, 14. Excess salt of one of the halogens, chloride, uh, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine. Uh, okay, pro acetine has this proton number 85. The reaction scheme shows a series of reactions using a solution of X as a starting reagent. Okay, this is X. Okay, we've added uh, nitric acid and silver nitrate. We got a precipitate. All right, precipitate. If we go back to our theory, all three of them give us precipitates, but of different colors. If we add excess dilute ammonia to it, okay. In ammonia, the precipitate, okay, the precipitates are either silver chloride, silver bromide, or silver iodide, right? But, uh, or silver acetide, as they've given us acetine as well. Okay. Guys, remember in case of chlorine, in case of sodium chloride, what would happen? A colorless solution forms when ammonia is added. So, sodium chloride can be a possible identity. All right. Now, let's move on to the, uh, let's look at the other answer options as well. What about bromide, iodide, and acetide? Bromide, iodide, and acetide, all of them, bromide is partially soluble. It's partially soluble. It does not give us a uh, completely colorless solution. So bromide cannot be the answer. Iodide is an acetide. Both are insoluble. So A is the correct option. Moving on to the next. All right. Percentage of ammonia obtained if equilibrium was established using the Haber process is given. The graph is plotted. Two temperatures are given. Which of them represents the two graphs? Okay. Correctly represents the two graphs basically. All right, so 400 and 500. First of all, guys, remember that increase in temperature increases the concentration of the, sorry, increases the rate of the reaction. But ammonia, since we know from our theory that it is an exothermic reaction, the Haber process is an exothermic reaction. Let me write down the equation. Uh, okay, wait. The two are six to, yeah, it's balanced. Okay, this is the equation, and it's an exothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction at high temperature will give us a lower yield. Okay, it will give us a smaller yield, but a percentage of ammonia obtained if equilibrium was established and is plotted against the operating pressure for two temperatures. Okay, which your graph correctly shows us. Okay, first of all, guys, if we increase the pressure, what is the effect of pressure? Since this, uh, the moles are gaseous, since the reactants are gaseous, and there are more gases, gaseous moles on the reactant side than on the product side. So increase in pressure would actually shift the equilibrium to the right hand side because increase in pressure favors the equilibrium to go in the re, in the side where there are fewer gases moles present. All right. So equilibrium shifted to the right hand side. So increase in pressure would actually increase the percentage of ammonia at equilibrium. All right. So now at equilibrium, if you are increasing the pressure, Either A or B can be the answer. C or D cannot be the answer because increasing pressure is actually increasing the uh, yield of ammonia. Now, which of the two temperatures? All right. Basically, at the higher temperature, we'll actually decrease the yield of ammonia that we are getting. At a higher temperature, we won't get more ammonia, but rather we'll get a lesser amount of ammonia. So basically, A should be the correct answer because in A, the rate of, uh, sorry, the percentage of ammonia that we get at 400 degrees Celsius is greater as compared to 500 degrees Celsius because this is an exothermic reaction and exothermic reactions are favored by lower temperatures. Moving on to the next MCQ. 16. Consecutive elements X, Y, Z are in the third period of the periodic table. Element Y has the highest first ionization energy and the lowest melting point. Okay. What could be the identities of X, Y, and Z? Okay, third period elements. Okay, period three uh, question is this. All right, this is a question for period three. Okay, element Y has the highest first ionization energy. Guys, remember in the periodic table, as we go across the period, the ionization energy increases, right? Across the period three, ionization energy increases. From left to right, it increases. So now X, Y, Z, what could be the identities of X, Y, and Z? They've told us that the highest first ionization energy is for Y. Okay, why? But guys, remember there was a few exceptions in period three as well in the ionization energy trend. Sodium, uh, sorry, magnesium to aluminum, and beryllium to boron, oxygen to fluorine, and sulfur. Uh, sorry, not oxygen to fluorine. Nitrogen to oxygen, phosphorus to sulfur. These were the exceptions. Now. The elements on the right hand side of these arrows, they have a lower ionization energy. All right. And these were a few exceptions to the trend.
Now, if we look at the first option, aluminum, silicon, and phosphorus. Let's look at its position in the periodic table. Aluminum, silicon, phosphorus. As we go across aluminum, silicon, and phosphorus, the ionization energy increases. It does not decrease. All right. So why they told us that Y has a greater ionization energy than both X and Z. So this option A cannot be the answer because it's actually increasing. Y has a lower ionization energy than phosphorus. What about magnesium, aluminum, silicon? Well, aluminum has a lower ionization energy than magnesium and it has a lower ionization energy than silicon as well. So again, B cannot be the answer. The middle element must have a lower ionization energy. Oh, sorry, a higher ionization energy as they told us that element Y has the highest first IE. Now, what about option C? Silicon, phosphorus, sulfur. Okay, this is an exception. Again, uh, let's look at the periodic table. All right, phosphorus has a higher, higher first ionization energy than silicon according to the overall trend. And then according to the exception, it also has a higher ionization energy than sulfur because this is an exception. So again, the phosphorus is the correct answer. So phosphorus will have a greater ionization energy than the two elements which are right next to it. So C should be the correct answer because phosphorus is an exception, right? Now let's move on to the next MCQ. Which property of group two elements, beryllium to barium, decreases with increasing atomic number? Okay, let's look at the periodic table. All right, beryllium to barium, this is group two. Okay, and we are going from beryllium to barium. The proton number increases. They are asking us which property decreases. Okay, which property decreases going down the group. Okay, down the group, it's actually a trend against the ionization energy. So the ionization energy decreases. Okay, now so let's look at it. Okay, we don't have an option of ionization energy. Okay, reactivity. Reactivity actually increases. So A cannot be the answer. Second ionization energy. This can be a possible answer because ionization energy does decrease going down the group. Solubility of hydroxides from theory, we know that solubility of hydroxide increases down the group. Cannot be the answer. Stability of carbonates. Well, stability of carbonates from theory also we know that it increases down the group. So B is the correct answer. Now moving on to the next which element of the third period requires the least number of moles of oxygen for complete combustion of one mole of oxygen element? All right, for this reaction, we'll just have to make up equations, stoichiometric equations with by, of reaction with oxygen. Okay, and then check out the moles of those equations. Aluminum plus oxygen forms aluminum oxide, Al2O3. Let's balance it. Three and two and four. Okay, four is to three is the mole ratio. What about magnesium? Magnesium reacts with oxygen and forms magnesium oxide. Requires half moles. What about phosphorus? Okay, phosphorus, actually P4 reacts with oxygen. From P4O10 or P4O6, I'll go on with P4O10. And it forms these five oxygen. What about sodium? Sodium reacts with oxygen to form sodium oxide. Two moles requires half. The question says least number of moles. Which of them requires the least number of moles? All right. So the mole ratio is four is to three. This would mean that one mole of aluminum would require how much? Let's use the unitary method to get the value of uh, the, the moles of oxygen needed for one mole. All right. So it's going to be three upon four, which is 0.75. All right. For aluminum, we require 0.75 moles of oxygen. For magnesium, we require 0.5 moles of oxygen. For phosphorus, we require 5 moles of oxygen. And for sodium, we require 0.25 moles of oxygen because the mole ratio is 2 is to 0.5. So 1 is to 0.25. So sodium requires the least number of oxygen for complete combustion of one mole. All right, so option D should be the correct answer. Going on to the next MCQ, number 19. Two properties of the non-metallic elements and their atoms are as follows. Property one, it has an oxide that can form a strong acid in water. All right. And property two says that it has no paired 3p orbitals, 3p electrons. Okay. Which properties do phosphorus and sulfur have? 
All right, first of all, let's uh, look at the proton numbers of phosphorus and sulfur. Phosphorus has a proton number of 15 and sulfur has a proton number of 16. Phosphorus is 15, sulfur is 16, as we know it from the periodic table. Now, since we know we can write down the electronic configuration, and once we write down the electronic configuration, we'll have our answers. So this is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. And over here, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. All right, now the first one says that it has an oxide that can form a strong acid in water. Okay, phosphorus and sulfur, they both dissolve, they both can form, uh, they both have acidic oxides, phosphorus 5 oxide and phos sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide. Okay, and both the oxides are acidic as they dissolve in water, so phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid can form. So one and two are possessed by both of them, sorry, property one is possessed by both of them. All right, so property one is possessed by both of them. So A, B, or C, uh, it can be any of these three options. Now let's uh, look at the next. It has no paired 3p orbitals. If we look at the 3p orbital electrons of sulfur, we have four electrons in there. Four electrons would mean that if we apply Hund's rule over here, since we know that there are three orbitals in P subshell, so first, second, and third. We've added up the three, first three electrons in here, and then the fourth electron will get paired. So sulfur will have paired electrons. So the second property is not shown by sulfur. So one and two both, and phosphorus has three electrons, so therefore all three are unpaired. So phosphorus can show both the properties, sulfur can only show the first property. So A should be the correct answer. Moving on to the next MCQ, 20. It says that when gases, chemicals are transported by road or by rail, they are classified as flammable, non-flammable or poisonous. Which commonly transported gas is non-flammable? Okay, which one is non-flammable? Let's see. Butane, this is a hydrocarbon and it will burn in oxygen to form carbon dioxide in water. It is flammable. Hydrogen is flammable because it burns in oxygen to form water. Propene is also flammable because again it's a hydrocarbon, gives carbon dioxide and water. Oxygen itself is not flammable. It does support burning, but it cannot burn itself. Okay, it supports burning. Supports burning, but oxygen cannot react with oxygen itself. Okay, so it is non-flammable. Non-flammable. Option C is correct. Right, so that's it for this lecture. Uh, meet you guys in the next lecture with the next 10 MCQs from 21 to 30. Link to which has been given in the description. Do check that out. Thank you so much.